it's Josh, your boy Ross, back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 finishers WWE wrestlers quickly abandoned. This should be a good one. This was dropped last year by WrestleMania. So I'm interested to see what finishers was dropped by which wrestlers. But appreciate all the love and support, man. Road to 70K, and let's get right into this video. The Super Hall, the Million Dollar Dream. Look, Mark's like Charles Barkley. He's fixed to join the Dream Team. Finishers have been ingrained with wrestling since the very beginning. The finisher is the move the wrestler executes to finish his opponent off and hopefully win the match. The finisher in question is the most important move in a wrestler's arsenal and mm -hmm. should look to be the most devastating one. He's destroying both bodies! Look at this monster! Now, almost every wrestler would have changed their finisher at one time or another. This could be for a number of reasons. The move itself may not match the gimmick that they're portraying at the time, and also the move itself may not be safe, meaning in order to protect their fellow wrestlers, a wrestler will change their finisher to something safer. Mm -hmm. But who seemingly abandoned their original finisher? Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 abandoned finishes <coughs> of WWE superstars. Be sure to subscribe sure, and hit that if you notification haven't already, bell subscribe for to daily Lady, wrestling man. videos. Number 1. Seth Rollins' High Knee Seth Rollins is well known for using the curb stomp, mm -hmm. a deadly looking finisher which involves Rollins stomping his opponent's face into the ground. Despite the legitimacy of his current finisher, there was a time when the WWE actually banned his finisher. Yeah, they did. In 2015, did. shortly after Rollins won the WWE title at WrestleMania 31, Vince McMahon decided the curb stomp was unsafe and ordered for it to be banned. Mm -hmm. Rollins then proceeded to use a DDT variant for a couple of matches before settling on the pedigree to yep. tie in with the association with Triple H and the authority. That's when he started using the pedigree. After they banned the stomp, he started using the pedigree because he was tied in with Triple H. However, in 2016, Rollins would turn babyface and move away from the association with Triple H. And after Rollins would defeat him at WrestleMania 33, Rollins would begin to use a knee to the face, similar to Kenny Omega's finisher. Mm -hmm. The move, though, was very anticlimactic and was nothing in comparison to the popular curb stomp finisher. Now, this would be the case until Rollins would return the curb stomp finisher in January 2018. Number two, Sean. Yeah, his curb stomp is just—it's always been a better finisher. It just—it's more—it's more fluid. Granted, I don't like how John Cena sells it when he gets hit with it, but it's always been a a, a better finisher in my opinion. Using the pedigree, we all know that's tied in with Triple H. I'm glad he got rid of doing that. Michaels teardrop suplex. Mm. Long before Shawn Michaels had become famous for the sweet chin music, HBK would have a very anticlimactic finisher that didn't really suit his gimmick at all and was in drastic need of a change. That was Michaels his finisher. A finisher called the teardrop suplex. The finisher was basically a leg hook suplex, which was made famous by Masa Saito in Japan. Michaels would use the move wow. between the years of 1992 and 1993, and interestingly, the sweet chin music was still part of his moveset and usually preceded the teardrop suplex. Naturally, HBK realized that the suplex oh, he was the sold perfect finisher for him, so around 1993, he would drop the suplex and just use the sweet chin music going forward. Sweet chin music would then go on to be one of the most famous finishing moves in mm -hmm. the history of WWE. Number 3. The Miz Mizzard of Oz. When The Miz debuted in 2006, many fans thought he wouldn't last. Mm -hmm. His act was extremely corny, and this translated to his at the time at below average in ring work. This also translated to his relationship with his co workers. Miz was notably disliked and was even kicked out of the SmackDown locker room at mm -hmm. one stage. Miz's early days as a wrestler in the WWE wasn't great to say the least, as he would come across as awkward and unnatural. The finisher The Miz used would be called The Mizzard of Oz, obviously a pun on the classic movie The Wizard mm. of Oz. The move itself would be basically a swinging neck breaker without the swinging. Miz was so green at this point in his career that it looked like he just fell over when executing it. Luckily, Miz would later go on to use the skull crushing finale. Yeah, that's way better. The Miz of, Mizzard of Oz? Cringe and doesn't look effective at all. At least the skull crushing finale looks a little bit more effective. And Miz himself would go on to be one of the WWE's most successful stories and would even go on to win the WWE title. Number four, John Cena Protobomb. 
Hmm? Prior to John Cena ascending to the top of the WWE and prior to him becoming famous for using the attitude adjustment or the FU to finish off his opponents, Cena used a different finisher. Cena would use a spin out powerbomb and it actually looked really good as Cena was naturally strong so mm. it looked devastating. The move would be called the Protobomb which was appropriately named after his FCW name of the prototype. However, in 2003, Cena would enter a feud with the then WWE God champion damn. Brock Lesnar. This was the first time that Cena had received a main event level push and to get inside of the head of Lesnar, he would begin to use the FU as a pun on Lesnar's finisher, the F5. Mm. He would then use it moving forward and would be later renamed the Attitude Adjust. Oh, I didn't even know that's how they got the name. Because, ah, oh, that, that was actually pretty cool. Because the F5 is still one of the craziest, most savage finishing moves of all time. But the fact he was feuding with him at the time, so he was like, I'm going to call this the FU instead of the F5. I like that. And then they changed it to the attitude adjustment for PG reasons. Adjustment after WWE went PG in the summer of 2008. Number five, Randy Orton, the Ozone. What? The RKO, without question, is one of the most yes. popular finishing moves of all time. <laughs> I who remembers when he did that? Did the split in the air? I was like, what the fuck, Randy? It was even turned into a meme. Yep. Even people who don't watch WWE know what the RKO is mm -hmm. and who executes it. However, there was actually a time when Orton wasn't hitting the RKO out of nowhere. When Orton made his WWE debut in 2002 on the SmackDown brand, Orton would use a move called the Ozone. The move in essence was the same as MVP's yeah. Playmaker. It would involve Orton bending his opponent over, locking his leg around the wrestler's head, keeping hold of their arm, and then spinning him down to the mat. The move is terrible, and in Orton's defense, it has been done by so many WWE superstars over the years, and it's never uh... looked good. However, in 2003, it looked good in that first one. It, it definitely looked good in that first one. It, I think Randy could have possibly pulled it off, but the RKO is, is perfect for him. Orton would debut the RKO, and the rest, as they say, is history. Number six, Kane, falling powerbomb. Mm. Many fans associate the legendary Kane with either the choke slam mm -hmm. or the tombstone pile driver as yeah. his finisher. However, there was a period when Kane used a new finishing move and it actually looked incredible. In 2001, Kane was positioned as a top <clears throat> babyface and he would need a new finishing move to go alongside the choke slam as the tombstone had been semi retired, albeit moderate uses from The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. However, even The Undertaker had adopted the last ride to use as an appropriate replacement. Mm -hmm. Being his half brother, Kane would begin to use a similar move, the falling powerbomb. Mm. The powerbomb was previously in Kane's arsenal, but in 2001, it became his finisher. It would be a much quicker powerbomb than fans would traditionally see, and Kane would fall down with his opponent and then roll into a cover. The move looked awesome, but unfortunately, Kane would start using the choke slam again as his main finisher after his return from injury in 2002. Maybe injury could have been part of the reason, because you're falling down with that person, so all that pressure is going to your knees, so I can see that. Number 7, Triple H, Diamond Cutter. When Didn't know Triple H used to use the Diamond Cutter. In 1995, after an uneventful stint in WCW, WWE wanted a moveset that would match the Hunter Hearst Helmsley gimmick of being a blue blood. Vince McMahon's idea was that Triple H would use a cutter style move and call it the Pedigree Pandemonium. The Pedigree Pandemonium. What the hell? The Pedigree pan Pandemonium? I'm glad he ended up using just the Pedigree, but the fuck is the Pedigree Pandemonium? Ooh, that's bad. Now, regardless of the name, the move was notable for being used by Diamond Dallas Page at the mm -hmm. same time in WCW and being called the Diamond, Diamond Cutter. Cutter yep. Famously, DDP requested that Triple H pick a different move to use as his finisher, and he obliged out of respect for the future Hall of Famer. Oh, wow. Triple H then began to use the Pedigree, a move that would make him famous and would win him countless world titles. Interestingly, the Cutter move would be used by Triple H's mm -hmm. stablemate Randy Orton in the Evolution Stable as of 2003. Orton would get permission. Yeah, uh, someone's at the gate. I guess, uh, I got a package coming, or I don't know what's going on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just is here, so she ordered something. All right, back to the video. And to use the move from DDP, and naturally, Orton made it into one of the most popular finishes. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I, I must have missed that part. Wait, wait, wait. Mate Randy Orton in the Evolution Stable as of 2003. Orton would get permission to use the move from oh, okay, GDP that's and cool. naturally, Orton made it into one of the most popular finishers of that's all cool. time. That's cool, he got permission to use Number it. Number 8, The Rock, 
running shoulder breaker. Now, mm -hmm. The Rock is without a doubt one of the most popular and successful WWE wrestlers of all time. Of course. But it wasn't always this way. The initial presentation of The Rock as Rocky Maivia mm -hmm. was one of the most hated babyfaces of all time and the WWE had to change Rocky's character or he would have been a complete flop. Yep. The Rock, following a character change in 1997, turned into one of the most charismatic and endearing wrestlers of all time, and he managed to attain millions of fans across the world. However, if you asked a WWE fan what the finisher of The Rock was prior to The Rock Bottom and The People's Elbow, they may look at you with confusion, as The Rock's finisher prior to these two moves he made legendary went very much under the radar. The Rock Bottom wouldn't debut in a match until May 1997, which mm. was seven months after The Rock's initial WWE debut. Prior to that, The Rock would use a basic shoulder breaker, albeit not the worst move in the entire world. It was nothing in comparison to the oh, two yeah. The Rock would go on to use. Oh, yeah, I'm his glad he, he changed that Number up. Number nine, Chris Jericho breakdown. Chris Jericho is the perfect example of evolution in wrestling. He constantly evolved his character and mm -hmm. his gimmick to keep him relevant and to appeal to the mainstream audience. This also extended to his moveset. Jericho constantly adds new finishing moves such as the Codebreaker or the Judas Effect to match his new personas. Mm -hmm. One of the moves that many fans forgot that Jericho added as a finisher was a move known as the Breakdown. The breakdown, in essence, would be a yeah. full Nelson face buster that looks similar mm -hmm. to the Miz's skull does. finale. Many fans don't remember Jericho using the wow. move because he used it so infrequently. The move would debut in 2001 when Jericho received a strong push as part of the Invasion storyline. The move was actually responsible for winning Jericho his first world title in the WWE when he pinned The Rock at the 2001 No Mercy. I did not even realize that. The move I would forgot. I Jericho didn't even realize that. To the walls of Jericho <clears throat> and the Lion Salt. And number 10, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Million Dollar Dream. Long before Stone Cold Steve Austin made the Stone Cold Stunner famous around the world mm -hmm. and he became one of the most popular wrestlers of all time, Austin executed another extremely popular finisher that he borrowed from another legend and fellow WWE Hall of Famer. In January 1996, Austin would debut in the WWE using the Ringmaster gimmick and would be managed by the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. Wow. By association, Austin began to use the Million Dollar Dream submission hold as his finisher and it looked extremely effective. However, in the summer of 1996, DiBiase would leave the WWE to join WCW to be part of the newly formed NWO meaning Austin would have to drop the gimmick. The Stone Cold mm -hmm. character would follow and the Stone Cold Stunner would be born. Austin actually kept the Million Dollar Dream around and would even use it heavily during his 2001 mm. heel turn. But there you have it, guys. Wow, bro, that was, that was pretty cool. Some of these I did not know. I did not know Triple H was using a, a somewhat of a cutter variant in his earlier, early in his career. Like, I didn't know that if you came from Brock feuding with Cena and Cena going with the part, you know, mocking the F5 as calling it the FU. Like, these were pretty cool, bro. Like, I, you know, I'm not even gonna lie to you. This was an informative video. I saw it in my sub box. I've never seen it. It was dropped last year by WrestleMania. So I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and check it out with you guys because this was cool, man. I like videos like this where you find out some things you didn't even know. And it's cool to see that, uh, you know, some of these wrestlers how they transform their finishing moves what they used to be to what they are now and ultimately it makes their character as a whole much better but comment down below let me know which finishing move surprised you from this clip like what did you really didn't know i think the, the most surprising one was probably the uh jericho one because i didn't even know he was using that move i didn't even know that was a thing, you know. So I never really paid attention to it. I always paid attention when we hit the walls of Jericho or, or the Cold Breaker, but I, I never really knew that was one of his finishes. So that was pretty cool, interesting. But I appreciate all the love and support, bro. Too, Syndicate. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all in the next one. Peace.